Welcome back to another video going over more of Sarah Boone's correspondence from prison. Today we are going to be covering the case updates, specifically the fact that Sarah's sixth attorney has, for the second time, filed a motion to withdraw. The first time her counsel filed a motion to withdraw was in December of last year after speaking with Sarah and noting her dissatisfaction with his representation. Frank J. Bankowitz is a court-appointed attorney, which means that at any given time, he has a plethora of other clients he needs to attend to and is likely in court, representing another party. Unlike many private attorneys, Bankowitz does not have a significant amount of time to dedicate solely to Sarah, and for months she has complained about that fact reportedly writing to the judge that Frank should be reprimanded for not doing his job. The judge has not reprimanded him, as he has done nothing wrong. In his original motion to withdraw, Frank wrote the following. Comes now Frank J. Bankowitz Esquire, counsel for the defendant, and the above styled caused and hereby requests that this court enter an order permitting court-appointed counsel to withdraw from this case and from further representation of defendant. In support of such motion, the undersigned states to the court as follows. Number one, on or about July 11, 2022, the undersigned was court appointed to represent the defendant in the above styled causes. Number two, due to irreconcilable differences which have arisen between the undersigned, his client, and his family, the undersigned will be unable to effectively and properly continue representing the client herein. Wherefore, undersigned counsel, respectful requests, his honorable court, enter an order granting this motion to withdraw as counsel for the above-named defendant, meaning in layman's terms that Bankowitz wouldn't be able to dedicate enough time to Sarah as he was going through family issues. Upon reading her letters, these issues could be a surgery he was going into that required him to take off work or a family matter that we weren't privy to. In some of her correspondence, she also alleged that this time was used for a vacation, but there was no evidence of that. This order was above board, and basically reiterated what Sarah had stated in her letters previously. He wouldn't have been able to give her case the attention she so desperately needed, and she would be better off working with someone else. However, the main issue with this case has always been that Sarah wants someone who will work full-time on her case, someone who will be available to take her calls daily, and simply act as an extension of her in all ways, but she cannot afford that. The first lawyer she had was a private attorney, one that her ex-husband had gotten for her, who could dedicate all of his time to her. But they couldn't afford that, so she was forced to use court-appointed attorneys time and time again. She refused to temper her expectations of them, and would routinely talk down to these attorneys, accusing them of not listening to her or sabotaging her case, and in the end, they would all file a motion to withdraw citing irreconcilable differences and leaving it at that. Judge Wayne C. Wooten has seen this time and time again with this case, and it's prevented the case from going to trial for three years now. Bankowitz's initial motion to withdraw eight months ago was denied, and for the past eight months, he has attempted to work with Sarah while working with his other clients. But as noted, nearly every month, Sarah will write a letter disparaging him and the court, claiming to be a victim of the American legal system, and placing the blame squarely on his shoulders because he doesn't make enough time for her. And so, before we read Sarah's latest correspondence to the public and the court, we will be reading his new motion to withdraw, and seeing how it differs from his previous. Comes now. Frank J. Bankowitz, Esquire, counsel for the defendant in the above styled caused, and hereby requests this court enter an order permitting court-appointed counsel to withdraw from this case and from further representation of defendant. In support of such motion, the undersigned states to the court as follows. On or about July 11, 2022, the undersigned was court-appointed to represent the defendant in the above styled causes. Number two, due to irreconcilable differences which have arisen between the undersigned and his client, the undersigned will be unable to effectively and properly continue representing the defendant herein. Number three, the defendant will not be satisfied with any attorney unless said attorney does not have a caseload and can dedicate his or her time solely to Miss Boone's case. Number four, the undersigned has been in murder trials over the past 60 days and is presently defending a capital murder case in Lake County, Florida which absorbs all of his time, including weekends. Number five, the best possible avenue is to have the defendant represent herself as no attorney can satisfy her. So, that motion to withdraw is incredibly different from the first one. The first one is extremely standard, giving us the reasoning without emphasizing any of the differences Sarah and Frank have had. It doesn't attack Sarah's character, but it does show there are issues, and they are bad enough that it would be in her best interest to work with someone else. 
but this one, it names names. It tells us why he's leaving, and we get a sense of why communication has been so difficult. Frank, his team, and his office staff have no doubt communicated with Sarah that he has been in court the last 60 days, and the fact that he has other clients has been communicated to her by the court itself, but she has written countless disparaging letters, stating that he is a hack, and he is a terrible lawyer, and that she is going to be persecuted wrongly. And when we have gone over her letters in our videos, we have even heard from people who agree with her, not knowing the legal system and the workload that Bankowitz and lawyers like him are under. Her letters have no doubt led to Frank's reputation being hurt and harassment, which is what Sarah wanted to have happen. So, this latest letter, he has directly given reasons as to why he can't represent her, why this case has not progressed, and he is demanding to be taken off the case. Four days after this motion to withdraw was filed, Sarah wrote the following letter. Judge Wooten, how do you feel about your attorney withdrawing? During an attempted video visit by a misrepresented, shifty reporter, this is how I was made aware of my attorney, Frank J. Bankowitz, cowardly and for the second time trying to ungracefully bow out of my case. Mr. Matt Johnson, please honor the integrity and ethics of a real reporter and not camouflage yourself as my friend in order to push your way through the rules and regulations of the correctional facility. Professional is also an option when scheduling, but clearly does not pertain to you. Just don't schedule at all, as I have nothing to report to you or court TV altogether. You're not even a real news channel, and only add to the confusion and hysterics wrongfully, illegally, and inappropriately concocted in my case. Do not contact. Pausing here. So, as always, after publicly disgracing her lawyer in a plethora of letters, letters that she knows are being made public by channels like mine, she's upset that her lawyer has chosen to file a motion to withdraw without telling her. This is now the seventh motion to withdraw in this case, two being done by Bankowitz, and none being done with her permission. And she continues to emphasize the point that she believes her lawyers need to ask her before they do this. But let's think about this scenario a bit differently. Let's say you're getting a cup of coffee at a local coffee shop, and the woman in front of you orders a drink, takes a sip, then begins to get angry with the barista because she feels that her drink was made wrong. She causes a scene, begins badmouthing the service workers to everyone in the shop, purposely spills her drink, then starts filming herself, now stating that her coffee was purposely made wrong and she's being poisoned by the employee. The workers are then well within their right to stop working with her and kick her out of the store. Moreover, they don't have to ask said person if they consent to being removed from the store because their behavior is so abhorrent. To be clear, Sarah is that person. She has disparaged her lawyers, called them constantly, even when they have told her that they are in court and cannot speak, and she has repeatedly claimed that they are conspiring against her to put her in prison. Them reading her letters, reading how she believes they cannot do their jobs and cannot possibly handle her case is cause for them to withdraw. You can't really take back those words, and if you tell your attorney that you don't believe they are the best suited to help you, they will leave the case. You cannot insult someone's work, then expect them to keep working with you, especially in the criminal justice system. The fact that she doesn't understand this basic concept is astounding, given her age and the fact that this has happened now seven times. From my perspective, I am surprised my attorney is trying yet again to give completely. No. Is it a blessing? Yes. Let's be honest. Frank J. Bankowitz is a dud of an attorney. He's unprofessional, hides, lies, and is disrespectful. I had a feeling when other attorneys spoke about him and winced, signed, or rolled their eyes, saying they have some of his clients. And after dining his three public reprimands, I announced to the court, in which he said pissed him off, being the reason for his first attempted withdrawal. This was going to be an adventure, but nonetheless hoped for the best. Unfortunately, I seem to have gotten the worst. Thankfully, there are many other professional and scrupulous valiant attorneys still available. And hopefully, after all my previous letters and six withdrawals to date, not by my choice, Judge Wooten, you will remove the blindfold this time when throwing your darts of justice at the remember everyone has constitutional rights and should be treated fairly dartboard. Okay, so we said this the last time she was assigned a new court-appointed lawyer and complained about how she didn't think they aligned with what she demanded in her letter to the judge. But a judge is not a matchmaker. They do not go over your case details with a fine-tooth comb, pour over every letter you've sent them, read your birth chart, and then match you with the perfect lawyer that you're compatible with. They assign you a lawyer who has handled cases like yours in the area, who is available. You do not get to make demands if you cannot afford your own attorney. Please. Thank you in advance 
for hopefully caring this time. Also, if you are insistent on continuing to be my judge, as revolution is supposed to happen every two years, I'm on going for now, and you've stated to me in your courtroom previously, I have not because I ask not, may you please observe and act independently as a judge and utilize your judicial authority to judiciously maintain forward direction or proper lawful ethical treatment and respect of the client. In any case, effective communication between all parties, especially the client and attorney, is being made productive, regular progress is being achieved, and all around fairness of and every aspect of constant. All right. A judge is not a lawyer's teacher. They do not make assignments to the court and walk by their desks as they do them to make sure they aren't making any errors and provide them assistance. They do not hold the hands of lawyers and guide them through the legal process, though maybe they should because they might be kind of cute, or give them a cookie when they do something right. Also, might be kind of cute, and a demerit when they do something wrong. Asking a judge to supervise your lawyers because they are so incompetent is not normal, and again, is why every lawyer she works with eventually leaves. Moreover, she fundamentally doesn't understand that she is the reason the case has taken so long to go to court. Every single time her lawyers back out of the case and file a motion to withdraw because of her negative behavior, she's adding months, if not years, to the trial date. Her antics, namely her entitled and aggressive behavior, ensure that she will not see this case go to trial within the next year. But she's entirely unaware of that. In her mind, all of her actions, no matter how negative and bad, are justified. But anyone else's actions, no matter if they are well-intentioned or by the book of the law, are all malicious, evil, and worthy of scorn. Aren't you tired of getting my letters, always asking about the same questions, concerns, and drab information? Please do not ignore and avoid what I have to say any longer, as I'm sure the taxpayers are unapproving of their tax dollars, mine too, being wasted for all my attorneys that you keep blundering. Once more, she is unable to take personal responsibility. Everything is someone else's fault. Everything is because of someone else. She left Jorge in the suitcase, but that wasn't her fault, that was Samsonite. They were just playing, and it was an accident. Her being arrested and going to jail? The police are corrupt and don't understand her. Her first lawyer withdrawing? Her dumb ex-husband can't afford to pay him and pay for their children's schooling. Her second lawyer leaving? He was a coward who sucked and didn't have enough time for her. So on and so forth. And you know what, this whole case reeks of big suitcase. I bet this whole thing's being funded by Big Suitcase as we speak. But I digress. People like this who have a victim complex can never see their part in any negative action, and they're truly exhausting to be around. They refuse to acknowledge any of their bad behavior, or believe that the world simply happens to them. She had seven lawyers leave her case. That's not her fault, it's the lawyer's fault, or it's the judge's fault, and her ex-husband's fault, and the governor's fault, because she went so far as to write them a letter too. And who is even saying that Sarah travels? Is there any evidence that Sarah wants to travel or has any intention to travel? So why would she even have a suitcase? I don't think Sarah's even seen a Louis Vuitton Horizon 55 brown monogram suitcase. And you know what? I don't even think Sarah wants to see a Louis Vuitton Horizon 55 brown monogram suitcase. But I rest my case. It took almost 14 months before my I told you so moment with Bankowitz and all my other attorneys, 42 months total. Please also see finally the absolute unfairness, fabrications, impediments, illegalities, and dysfunctions ongoing in my case, and how truly, unmistakably, ransacked by the quote, justice system and perverted by the whole world my entire case has been and become. Add yourself to the mayhem, hype, and added difficulties. Just so we have a comprehensive list, here are the people that Sarah blames for Jorge's murder and her being in jail. Jorge, her ex-husband the police, her seven lawyers, the judge, YouTube, everyone who has watched any video about this case, Court TV, any YouTube channel that has discussed the case, the news, the justice system on the whole, the mayor, the governor of Florida, and you, watching right now, and the only person who has been left off the list, notably, is herself. Which is weird, because she is the one, why do I have to say this? Because she is the one who put Jorge in the suitcase and locked him in there, for 12 plus hours to suffocate. What, did he fucking slip and fall? Oh, I'm slipping and falling. I have an unfair opportunity and everything with all the predisposed, non-permissive, illegally distributed, case-altering, sensitive information and details spread globally for everyone's viewing except me. 
my hand is known before the cards are even out of the box. There's not a bell anywhere that hasn't already been rung for all to hear. Seeds have been planted, all illegally and unfairly. For the monumental amount of time, allowing the world to abuse and devastate my private case information, lack of proper orders, not having an appropriate attorney and non-existent security and protection of any kind, for all said information becoming so easily mutated and, quote, shared without my permission and before my trial. It is unfair and unlawful that a heavily prejudiced, ignorant, incorrect prejudgment has been made as a result. This could have been stopped, lessened, or averted if someone was doing their job correctly. I am still doing mine by telling you so. I am not wrong. But she is wrong. The issue, Sarah, because I know this has been explained to you many times, is that you killed a man in Florida, one of the states with the most open sunshine laws in the U.S., which means that any person can request to access police files, recordings, or footage and be given it with no questions asked. As mentioned in our first video going over her letters, this is the reason why we see so many Florida man slash women headlines about some wacky crime happening. It's not because Florida is insane and everyone there is constantly committing crimes, it's because reporters can easily access police records and documents for their stories. No still. I believe it all depends on how much money, notoriety, and benefits anyone and everyone can get for themselves and however, no matter the destruction caused or the ominous, irreparable shadow made along the very lucrative way. A system for all the wrong reasons. Alright, so three pages in and Sarah is once again accusing the judge of being crooked. Sure that won't affect anything else going forward. As for Bankowitz and his irreconcilable differences, this means because I asked again about his phantom phone numbers and any progress occurring since not speaking to him in months and after. 408 days, 58 weeks, 9,792 hours of his representation, from only his date of his appointment, 7-11-2022, to withdraw attempt, 8-22-23, with only six in-person meetings, totally seven hours out of 9,792, four to 15 minute video visits, and two phone numbers given, zero working, zero calls answered, 10 letters from me, client, trying to communicate with no response, eight letters from me, client, to judge, no response, productively, four letters from me, client, to my investigator, asking him to attempt communication on my behalf to Bankowitz, five unknown attempts by my investigator, See letter 8223 letter. By himself, directly, and on my behalf, no response. Nine attempts made by outside sources on my behalf, including phone calls, voicemails, and emails. No response. Also, trying to use recycled components in my case. No discovery, witness list, research, orders, instructions, records, depositions, downloads, etc. after 13 months. Nothing by confirmation of his lack of professionalism, principles, disrespect, lies, and not caring. And please note, 11 out of 13 months were are with no communication. None in any forms. The only quote difference is I want progress, productivity, honesty, respect, and results. If he were such a professional attorney from the beginning and not selling me on his stable of witnesses, historical background, and all of his abundant resources, he wouldn't be still avoiding and cowering behind his now second attempt to withdraw, number two promotion to withdraw. He's not cowering or avoiding her. He is literally actively working another capital murder case which requires his full attention. Clearly, everyone can see, anyone not lobotomized, in my slides, would be highly unsatisfied with Bankowitz's overall performance as an attorney, see prior data, and no dedication has been made on his part in my case or any productive progress or effort. What times has been put forth solely? The 7 out of 9,792 in 13 months? Again, this man is constantly working other cases. He's a court-appointed attorney. He cannot make a living off of working for Sarah, and she can't pay him. Moreover, his work can only really be done away from her. The reasons that they haven't had so many in-person meetings is because he literally can't do that. In his motion to withdraw, he cites that she will not be satisfied unless she is working the case, and she proves that to be true. She wants to be her own attorney. She wants to be in charge of what is said in the case, as well as what is asked and how it is done. The concept that he worked on her case without her present, without her behind him telling him what things meant, and how to think is unbelievable to her. As I reminded Bankowitz during one of four video visits and him repeatedly telling me 
how, quote, busy he is with all of his other murder cases after, again, no communication for months, I politely raised my hand to the camera where he could see and said, murder case. I am your client also and have been. When do I get to go to trial like all the other clients? He said he had to think about everything and disconnected. No word since. 100 days later, except for the withdrawal I learned about from court TV and not him. Okay, so she's lying. Within this letter, she lied. I'm not terribly surprised, but the fact that she can't keep her story straight for one letter is kind of silly. Sarah stated that Frank is callously uncommunicative with her, that he would disappear for months at a time, never telling her where he is going or what he's doing, so she would be left calling him repeatedly, hoping for an answer. However, she just said that he has told her directly that a hundred days ago, he told her he had his hands presently full with a case that was about to go to trial, one that he has been in for the past 60 days. He wasn't telling her that as an excuse. He was telling her that because he was telling her that he wouldn't be able to speak to her for the next coming months. So the last couple of letters that she has written, asking where her lawyer is and complaining that he is being callous and rude, she knew where he was. He was in court for another case, and he told her that, but she ignored it because in her mind, she is his priority. Mind you, her asking when she will go to trial is rich, because her trial would have been over and done with already, had she stayed with any of the lawyers that she had gotten prior to Frank. Judge Wooten, with everything I have stated and all my information produced to you, and all my previous letters so you are aware, Clearly, Bankowitz should not continue being my attorney. Wouldn't you agree? Clearly, you should have listened and reviewed much earlier when I was trying to communicate with you ten letters ago, just about him. Please listen and include me going forward. It is my right. With that being said, and because in the past you have stated to me you have other priorities, not allowing me rightful, appropriate time to speak in your courtroom when I am allowed permittance to my meetings, and I am on your schedule for that day, four times going to court with Bankowitz, total times, with all other attorneys, three, seven times in ongoing four years. Number one, April 29th, 2022. First attorney withdraw attempt. Judge made revised twice. Number two, May 10th, 2022. First attorney withdraw attempt. Agreed and granted. Trial was 523. Number three, December 17th, 2022. Sixth attorney, withdraw attempt. Denied. I never even knew about this until stated in court during status hearing. No copies received yet. Number four, February 10th, 2023. Status hearing, carryover. Five, March 31st, 2023. Status hearing, carryover. Number six, May 25th, 2023. Status hearing, carryover. Judge stated I was delaying trial. Me. Hence, my letter, dated 62923, hand delivered, second copy, 72123. Number 7, July 21st, 2023, status hearing, carry over. Judge stated he has other priorities for the day when I was trying to address the court. Please grant Frank J. Bankowitz motion to withdraw as my attorney. I, Sarah Boone, permit Judge Wayne C. Wooten to release Frank J. Bankowitz entirely from my case for obvious aforementioned reasons, stated. I will allow withdraw when it should be termination. We all know it. Me and my hope. Next. Sarah is exactly the type of person who goes into a restaurant or store and tells the service workers that because she is paying for her meal, they technically work for her. The judge does not answer to you, Sarah. In the meantime, of my selection of my next attorney, aim please, and also going forward. Please enable and support me in trying to utilize my constitutional rights and as a proud citizen of the United States, and stop willingly, actively allowing the violation of said rights. See previous letter dated 5523. Please include me. Please listen to what I have to say. No one else does or has. It is my case. Hopefully, futuristically with a better, more appropriate, professional attorney of your choosing. Less letters, if any, will be generated, and more time you will have to dedicate to all of your, quote, priorities you made known to me in the past. Please know, also, Your Honor, I know I am not a priority, as you condescending and incorrectly stated, nor am I making myself out to be, or ever have been, in anything my entire life. In one of the pretrial meetings, assessing if the lawyers were ready to take the case to trial, the judge, who had other cases on the docket, 
said that this case was not his highest priority that day, because he already knew that Sarah's lawyer wasn't ready, and they weren't going to be making any big decisions involving said case. Sarah, in her delusion, took this to mean that the judge hates her, and doesn't think she is a priority in anything, that her life is worthless, and she should basically stop existing. The leap in logic you would have to make is not insignificant, but she is going to use this statement as proof that she is being victimized by the criminal justice system. I am a client to my attorney, now seventh and all prior, an inmate to the county jail and criminal case, for your righteous judgment still. Clearly, after yet another letter from me, and another withdraw, not by my choice, and 42 uneventful months later, still looking for the starting line, and seven times more, nothing has been made a priority. Please help Bankowitz wipe the sweat from his brow and inform him that he can stop the self-sabotage. He is no longer my attorney. Amen. My perseverance is real. So is my truth. I can't wait to meet the bullseye. Court appointed. Audacious gratitude. Sarah Boone. Four days after that letter, Sarah sent another one. Clerk of courts. Judge Wooten. Anyone. So confused. So tired of the perpetual question marks over my head. As usual. Thanks to the ongoing convolution of everything from no communication, no system, not including me, and no care. And I can't ask my attorney because he's trying to withdraw again. I wouldn't get a response anyways. It's funny how the only piece of correspondence via mail I have actually received from Bankowitz is his own motion to withdraw as counsel number two. Judge Wooten, please clarify my requested information as follows. So I, the defendant in my case, can prepare and plan accordingly. What is going on? This information in question is all I have from an outside source looking on the clerk's website to keep me updated since no one else will. I have tried to dilute some time of the question marks, but need you, Judge Wooten, to help me get it correct and begin my preparation. Please clarify and send copies for... Filed. July 21st, 2023. Title. Notice of Hearing. 4. Pre-trial Conference. When? September 8th, 2023 at 9 a.m. Defendant received copy? Yes. Is the defendant attending? Unknown. Why didn't I receive a copy from attorney? Filed. July 26th, 2023. Title. Notice of ex-party. 4. Notice of ex-party. When? September 8th, 2023 at 9 a.m. Defendant receive a copy? No need copy. In defendant attending? Anonua. I thought the pretrial conference was on this date. Is this meeting for the recycled psychologist? Why didn't I receive a copy from court? Why didn't I receive a copy from attorney? Filed. August 22nd, 2023. Title. Notice of hearing. 4. Status hearing. When? September 15th, 2023 at 9 a.m. Defendant receive a copy? Yes. From court. Is defendant attending? Unknown. Is this for the motion to withdraw? It was filed the same day. If not, what for specifically? Why didn't I receive a copy from my attorney? Filed August 22nd, 2023. Title, Motion to Withdraw as Counsel. Defendant receive a copy? Yes. From attorney. Why didn't I receive a copy from court? Filed August 22nd, 2023. Title, Notice of Hearing. 4. Motion to Withdraw. Bankowitz signed document. When? September 15th, 2023 at 9 a.m. Defendant receive a copy? No need copy. Is defendant attending? Unknown. Two meetings are already scheduled on this day. What is correctly happening? This was filed the same day as attorney's motion to withdraw. Why didn't receive a copy of this from him also? Why didn't the court send a copy with the status hearing notice filed the same day as motion to withdraw? Which date is correct for actual notice to withdraw? Again, what is going on and when? I rarely am included in on the certificate of service for any document filed or anything else. I should be an automatic inclusion. Please send revised and or all correct copies of the aforementioned documents so I have for my records and is the only way I know unless able to find an outside source. Again, receiving copies of notifications, updates, schedules, everything to all of my meetings slash conferences should be automatic so I know. It is my right. Please include finally. Am I really the only one who is trying to figure anything out for ND about my case to finally conclude? Should I, the defendant of all parties in my case, be included overall and receive necessary needed copies? Please clarify everything, Sarah Boone. I think the issue that Sarah is running into here is that she believes she is the smartest person in the room, when in fact, she's not. 
The issue is, all of the filings are easily understood to anyone working in law. Because she has no experience with the legal system, and thus Lee is ignorant, she needs everything explained to her as if she is five. The reason that her lawyers and the judge don't want her in the courtroom and don't want her to take an active role in her own defense is that it would mean they would have to explain every little thing to her and go over how the status hearing and pretrial conference are happening on the same day at the same time because they will be discussed by all parties at that time and date, and it's not a clerical error. They would have to stop and explain extremely simple concepts to her, and because everyone else involved doesn't need those concepts explained to them, Sarah would believe they are lying to her, or withholding things from her. To be clear, I do not think we will see this case go to trial before 2025. I think Sarah will get another court-appointed lawyer, and she will likely bash them the same way she has bashed Bankowitz, and I think, like them, they will leave the case. I think they will also have to do multiple motions to withdraw, and I think at the end of the day, Sarah will be put in a position to where she feels like she has to represent herself, because the whole system is corrupt, and she is the only person with the gumption to stand up for what is right. With all of that said, let me know what you think will happen in the coming years. When do you think we'll see this case go to trial? Do you think Sarah will represent herself, or do you think she will finally find a lawyer who will be able to put up with her nonsense. Let me know in the comments down below. As always, if there is a case you would like to see, email me at dreading.official at gmail.com or leave a comment below. I'll see you on our next video, and remember to stay safe.